Listen Up with Jim Potts. Listen Up, business owners, CFOs, human resource managers, and all managers and supervisors. Jim Potts is answering and addressing your questions and concerns, helping you stay out of court. Furthermore, please be advised that Jim's answers are not legal advice and are only intended as a guide based on his years of experience. The phone lines are open, 1-855-4-J-POTS. That's 1-855-457-6887. You can also email us at listenup at jameswilliampottsllc.com. Ready to listen up? Here is Jim Potts. Hey, Jim Potts back on the air. Um, I want to take a moment to, uh, I reached out last episode to the California legislators and I, I got some positive emails back about that. So I appreciate the support that's out there because the general feeling is that is that they are choking the life out of employers. So um, I'm glad that people are, are agreeing about that. Of course, those are probably employers that are agreeing about it, not necessarily employees, um, because a lot of these things are for the benefit of the employees. And I never want to have anybody misunderstand my attitude toward employees. I think that uh, as a you know, businesses are nothing without their employees. So I think it's good to have a nice, healthy um, environment for employees. I think employers need to abide by the laws. The work that I do is to help employers make sure that they are following the law, and that way they have a healthy work environment. And quite frankly, they don't have to worry about getting sued. So it's really kind of a you know of a, of a, a dual situation. Um, so at any rate, with that in mind, I want to move on. Look, I want to talk today about preventing workplace violence. Preventing workplace violence. There is a lot that's going on right now. I've been asked to speak on some different things. I've been speaking on um, the impact of domestic terrorism on the work environment. Um, we, we, there's some things that employers can do, in my opinion, uh, regarding preventing this workplace environment. So I've kind of narrowed it down to about, mm, about five different areas. The first thing that you can do is screen applicants. Now, your best chance to avoid workplace violence is to avoid letting in violent people. Now, but here's the problem. We can do that for now. But as you've heard me say in, in uh, some of my former podcasts, that the state government as well as the federal government are looking more and more toward getting rid of background checks, criminal background checks. Now, that to me is problematic. A person has a violent history. I think an employee has a right to know that before they hire somebody. So that's why I'm still sticking with this to try and do the background checks until they finally say employers can't do that anymore. Um, I heard this morning that they've got one organization out there or there's some processes going on right now where people can actually wipe out their criminal history. There's a procedure that they have to go through that can wipe out all their criminal history. So an employer, even if they do the background check, would never even know. I, you know, I, I'm an advocate that people that have committed a crime and they've served their time, they deserve another chance in my opinion. So I want to make that very clear. So don't send me a lot of hate mail. I'm just telling you flat out, I do believe people that have served their time have, have paid their debt to society, and I think they personally should be given a, you know, a, a, another chance. Now, you know, when, you know, in terms of screening your applicants, you can still ask apl applicants for personal as well as professional references, and you can assist on face-to-face -face interviews so managers can gauge an, ap an applicant's temperament. So never leave that out. Some people are just hiring people sometimes. But get that face-to-face -face thing going so you can see the person's uh, temperament. You know, hopefully um, if they've got a, you know, kind of a bad behavior, you would be able to uh, see through that. So use experienced people to do the interviews. All right. Now, the second one is as what you need to do is to have a anti-violence policy in place. So when you do your personnel books, you want to make sure that you've got a tough policy in place regarding any violence. It's got to stand on its own, not part of some other general policy on professional behavior or misuse of, of office equipment. You've got to have it where you have a strict policy, a zero tolerance policy regarding any kind of violence in the workplace. Look, you have guys uh, who actually get into, we get these calls uh, where people, guys get into this, the, these fistfights. You know, they get into arguments with people on, that work on a commission basis. Um, it's a dog eat dog, you know, highly competitive situation. And you got guys that are throwing punches. It's not just in sales, it's in other areas as well where, 
you know, they just get mad at each other and they start throwing punches. I don't know that I've ever heard of two women in a work environment actually throwing punches. Uh, the women tend to uh, shun people, uh, you know, have them, you know, being uh, kept separately from the other ones. You know, and now that's called bullying, by the way. But it's normally with the guys. Now, the other way that the zero tolerance policy has to be enforced is by the manager. So the manager can't have a concession that just because he likes one person and doesn't like the other person, that it's okay, and therefore he'll let that person stay and get rid of the other person. Look, you need to do your due diligence on your investigation, and when you do your investigation, if it's determined who started the fight or who threw the first punch, I think that makes a difference. But oftentimes with these, you don't know who's around. All right, so it's one person's word against the other. If it's one person's word against the other, in my opinion, and you've got a zero tolerance policy, they both have to go. That's just, I'm just offering that as, a, as an opinion. But you need to make sure you have a zero tolerance policies for any kinds of violence and threats of violence, by the way. So I, I want to make sure I make that clear. Somebody tells somebody, hey, we can take this out to the parking lot. That to me is the same thing as if somebody has thrown a punch. Because you can't take a chance anymore with all of this. Uh, violence is violence. We've got enough other, other issues that are going on out there. So make sure you've got a, a, a very good anti-violence violence policy in place. Now, here's something employers don't think about. And that's a crisis management team. A crisis management team consists of normally, they say roughly six to eight people who function as coaches before violence erupts. And incident, manage, and, and incident managers if it does erupt. So basically it's what they're talking about is that you should have somebody on that, on that team from like human resources, maybe the safety manager for the place. Um, you know, if you have legal um, representation, maybe they can be on it for advice. And anybody, some, some businesses have security as well. So have a combination of people uh, that are on this so-called team, if you will, uh, as a crisis management team. Now, the team should track complaints of violent or intimidating employees' behavior. That can help identify potentially violent employees before something actually happens. And, you know, most employers know when somebody's got the kind of behavior that needs to be questioned. And, you know, if they know that somebody is that way, then, you know, they need to keep an eye on them and have the conversation. And by the way, before I forget, I get calls sometimes where employers have fired somebody for fighting. And then two years later, I got a call like this about six months ago. They, they call me to tell me, oh, by the way, uh, we have a person who in fact um, uh, was terminated two months, I mean, two years ago. And now they've come back because they want to get their job back. But they've told us that they've taken anger management classes and they're not the same person as they were before. And, you know, should we hire them or not hire them? Well, look, if they've got a past history, in my opinion, in your work environment, I would be careful about hiring somebody under those circumstances. Only because if something does happen, I'm going to tell you that that could subject you now to negligent hiring. And the whoever gets hit or whatever the case may be in your work environment, that person's attorney can come back and say, you know what? You knew this person was dangerous because you fired them before for the same thing. And what steps did you take to ensure that they're not the same person that they were before? You're not gonna know that. You're not gonna know that. So then you're in a situation now where it's negligent hiring, and now you've got a lawsuit on your hand. On your hand. So in my opinion, um, they get one bite of the apple. If they, in fact, engage in that behavior, I would, I would strongly suggest that you not, you know, rehire them. The fourth area, that we need to discuss is that you've got to train your frontline supervisors and managers. And if you've got a, like a receptionist, you know, people that greet people when they come in uh, to the facility. Now, because I'm going to tell you something, these people are going to be your eyes and your ears. Okay. They're going to be on your early warning system. They're going to be the ones that are going to see some kind of strange behavior and they're going to have to make, take whatever procedures you have in place to let somebody know something's going on. And I'll tell you, you have domestic violence uh, and violence in the workplace because of uh, ex-wives, ex-husbands, uh, you know, upset boyfriends, upset girlfriends, etc. 
You know, if somebody comes in there and they say, hey, listen, you know, my ex has been looking for me. Um, he's a very violent person. And, you know, that person can bring a picture in and give it to the person at the front desk. So if that person appears, you know, you don't have it sitting on top of the desk. The person can have it, you know, under the, the little podium style desk that some of them have at the front area there with a picture there. So when a person comes in, they recognize the person. That's just a very simple way to do it that could work for you. But they need to train their frontline supervisors and greeters to make sure uh, what the procedures to be uh, should be in the event that they see somebody that, that looks uh, somewhat uh, suspicious. Now, the other thing that you could do, publicize your anti-violence program. Use meetings, newsletters, email, and the internet to get the word out that your organization has a zero tolerance policy on the workplace violence. And be sure everyone knows how to contact the crisis management team and when to call 911. We don't want people running off in a panic and every time somebody thinks somebody looks suspicious, they're dialing 911 and you've got the um, the local police department, you know, coming over there with lights flaring and bailing and, and the siren going off. Uh, you don't want that, all right? So what you need to do is have a crisis team, but you put the word out that we have a zero tolerance policy and make sure you enforce the policy and the word will get out. When the word gets out, it may help you have less issues. All right, so let's go. Let's go with that. Um, and if you try that, hopefully it's going to work for you. At least it's a step in the right direction. All right, with that last comment, it's time to close out the segment. And let me remind you that you can hear us on Facebook at, at Listen Up and subscribe to us on iTunes. Just look for Listen Up with Jim Potts. And as a reminder, we take calls every third Friday. We can be between 9.45 and 11, and you, we can be reached at 855-4J-POTS or 855-457-6887. Or you can email us at listenup at jameswilliampottsllc.com. Okay, I'm Jim Potts. I will continue to fight the fight, and thank you very much for listening. Thank you for being a part of Listen Up with Jim Potts. We take your calls every third Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for your questions and concerns. Call us at 1-855-4-J-POTS. That's 1-855-4-J-POTS. Again, that's every third Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time at 1-855-4-J-POTS. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on iTunes, and link up with us on LinkedIn. You can also email us at listenup at jameswilliampottsllc.com. Until next time, make it a great week.